Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are again at uh, when we feel like it o'clock. That's when I do things, when I feel like it. And I feel like it because I have Steel Flyers here today. And uh, he has his own podcast, which he's going to tell you about in a second. He did his first one. I watched it. It was really cool. It was, uh, he, he does it with his wife, which is really awesome. And uh, we today are going to go back to the Hub City conversation. We're also going to talk about some Seattle expansion stuff and some of the angles that they look like they're going, what direction they're going in, in comparison to, say, the Vegas uh, franchise and how they did things. And who knows what other frolic we may get into. You know how it goes. You guys have all watched the videos by now. The whole land has, or at least I hope you have. And if you haven't, you should, because they're great. All right, yeah, I'm with you, man. I'm with you, man. I'm with you. So, <laughs> Thank you very much. First, first of um, all, let us know about that podcast. Oh, we had uh, Joe Boric on yesterday. Bye. You got to check wow. that out. That was oh crazy. man, that was really good. You you guys smoking. That was really really good stuff, man. You you really need to strap into that one for sure. Um, can't say enough about Joe. Can't say enough about the Perlos of Wisdom. Got to get your Perlos on, boy. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, but thanks again for having me on man it's it's great um been been a little while since i've been able to do one so uh in the interim i i dropped off a podcast on my uh on my own uh me and the best half uh dropped one off yesterday and uh it's on spotify um it's working on being on google and it's on a couple other places so check it out um it is the steel flyers podcast um, and you can reach me at Steel Flyers on Twitter. And stay tuned for a website coming soon. Uh, that'll be uh, www.steelflyers.com. So coming soon. Yeah, coming soon. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so we got some today, fresh off the presses, as I like to say. Breaking. Breaking. But guess what? In our last podcast, we pretty much predicted something similar to this, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah, we were all over that. That's like yeah. it's like we knew. <laughs> oh, it's like we knew. Right. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. But uh, yeah, it was looking like COVID was going, uh, doing what COVID does, <laughs> and, and getting coming back again in in the United States for some reason. It doesn't like a, the Canadian bacon over here or something. I don't know what the hell. <laughs> maybe um, that's it yeah maybe it doesn't like the bacon i like canadian bacon i don't know how anybody could not want canadian i like anything that bacon. says bacon i you like anything somebody, that says bacon of, yeah, exactly <laughs> so, you know you could, that's how you can judge if uh if something is worthy of or not is if they like canadian bacon or not except for people that don't eat pork you guys are awesome too but <laughs> besides that if you eat pork and don't like bacon oh I don't man trust you right off the bat there's a local butcher around where we live and they smoke their own meats and oh they make the best smoked uh pork loin oh yeah yeah let me tell you that's good stuff yeah, we could just talk about bacon but we're in yeah, everything's better with bacon i'd be fine with that maybe i'll start my own podcast the bacon podcast the bacon that's podcast <laughs> i already have a t-shirt that says everything's better with bacon so exactly. Exactly. you put it on the front of your bumper it would taste good um we have so anyways for some reason i think a lot of it has to do with the population in, in canada yeah. we have a very low population and so yeah. we don't bang into each other quite as much uh so that is part of the reason anyways edmonton especially has had a very low covid uh, uh per capita ratio uh very low death rate and yeah. toronto's uh, toronto's in the same boat toronto's, toronto's got lower, very that's for sure. lower yep mm -hmm. yep so uh edmonton had to really sell itself like through the roof and we have a guy there that uh, does that sort of thing very very well he did do very well i heard it from a bunch of people how impressed they were by how he, what he said he was going to do in the vacation and all of the stuff that he put out there for, yeah, he's amazing at sales, incredible at sales. Yeah. Uh, so we got it. And then Toronto said, uh, yes, we're Toronto, but yeah, but well, they didn't even say anything. They were just like, well, we're Toronto. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> of course where else like, you that's go? like the default, you know, that yeah. was the default selection, Toronto, exactly. but there's other, there's As... another city. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. What? No, no. But as we were yeah. talking about the last time we were talking, and even just what we were talking recently before the show, is that, you know, they're going where it's the low cases, where the low COVID is the low number of cases of COVID. That's yeah. where they're doing. They really have no choice. I mean, it wasn't too bad at one time, but it, it's escalated so much in Vegas that uh, it's and and in all in a lot of places in the United States. I think there's only two states where the death rate is going down or something like that. I just heard so uh, that's that doesn't bode well. For... <laughs> not for playing hockey. Not when you're trying to bring people into a, you know, when you're trying to bring 600 people into a hub city. Um, yeah, that's. That's not a good combination. So, yeah, uh, th- have they officially come out and made the announcement yet? Yeah, yeah, they, did they have. Today. Okay, All they right. did okay. today. It's going to be Edmonton, yeah. Toronto. They're not okay. beating around the bush anymore. That's just the way it's going to be, and that's it. So, uh, finally, they came out with the, any of the announcement. Well, I think again they were waiting for several reasons to see what happens with the COVID situation for one, and hopefully, like. For their in their case, they were hoping it went lower so they wouldn't have to do this at all. But the odds of that happening were probably pretty slim. But maybe I don't know. It doesn't matter. I mean, if if they went lower, they could have maybe ha- added more hub cities or something of that nature, or maybe even had fans. That's what they were really hoping for. But yeah, we don't. Opposite, it went, yeah, and went the opposite direction, and and they were probably thinking about that too. If we claim the hubs now and then get it all ready and then we find that Kobe comes back again on the second wave then we got a real whole new direction and oh gosh it'd be a cluster so <laughs> I, I don't want to get into too much of that you know what I mean so it, look the, they're obviously going for where the safety is and you can't blame them for that no. and um, I'm, I'm all for that um, I, I agree with a certain tweet that happened today that said I would watch hockey on the moon so <laughs> yeah should i strap on my spacesuit? <laughs> should well, i fi- fire up the saturn 5 rocket because i would watch hockey on the moon you bet yeah. if i had to Maybe. go to the moon to watch it yeah i'd go there too yeah, probably yeah i might go there anyways but if there's hockey there for sure <laughs> you betcha that's what i mean man if there's hockey man i'm okay where can i go how, how do i buy a ticket and how's that yeah. work <laughs> well, now let's get into a little more interesting conversation, shall we? Ooh. This whole idea that it has been, it's been said that what we were discussing in our last podcast about this hub thing, it was the possibility that the home teams were going to play not in their home arenas. Well, apparently that's not what's going to happen. Home teams are going to play in their home arenas. What do you, th- I, I have an idea what you think of that. But uh, why don't you express to the land your thoughts on that? I think I was initially, I thought I was wrong because they disqualified Pittsburgh because we originally talked about, we thought, well, how are they going to do that? Are they going to actually allow for the home cities to play in the, in those hub cities? And then we saw, and and you said it way back that, no, they're going to switch. They're going to have the, the East's, guys are going to go to the West and the West guys are going to come to the East. And then I even saw an article about that out there. Okay. And, but now as we can see, that's not going to be the case. They're going to allow the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to play in Toronto and all the Eastern teams are going to be in Toronto and the same thing with that West. Mm -hmm. So apparently my theory wasn't that far out of the water. (laughs) <laughs> and but it is going to be a clear distinct advantage for the Edmonton Oilers against the Chicago Blackhawks because they've played in that arena they know the boards they know uh how the puck bounces off the glass they you know they know what it's like skating behind the net they they know how that all goes same thing with Toronto the Toronto Maple Leafs skate in that arena all the time they know how that goes they know where to sit <laughs> you know so that to me equates to a distinct advantage because there's not going to be any fans in the stands and teams are grasping 
at things for an advantage or for momentum, like we were talking about way back, that's that's what I think is going to be kind of a – even though we're, we're, we're both kind of thinking that Toronto is not going to make it out of there, um, I think that's that might get them a game. That might steal them a game. That might – We'll see. Um, yeah, I, I, I'd be really. I want to hear. Like, I've heard the thing. Well, it's not really advantage. I've heard players say it's not really advantage because there's no fans. I've heard players say that. So, I just don't understand how play. That sounds like a bunch of gamemanship to me. Seriously, because I, I played, and yes, there are no fans. There's something about the feel of your own dressing room. Just that alone. And uh, I'll, I'll throw in a couple other things. <laughs> I'll throw a couple other things in there. I don't know if the wives and kids are going to be able to, allowed to go. If they do, they got to stay in a hotel. More than well, likely, if, they're not going to go. Well, so, if Edmonton is offering the the vacations and everything like they're still doing, then yeah. the wives and the kids are going to be there, or they're going to be on those vacations or whatever. They'll the, send them on that. vacation and all okay. of those sort of things. Like okay, that. so they're really not going to be there then. So they're sending them on these vacations then. So that they're not going to be there then. Okay. Except it's possible. I think it's very possible that if I'm living in Edmonton, if I'm an Edmonton player, maybe uh, most of them would want to have the advantage of having their family close. Now, they can't go see their family, but they're still close. It's just easier on the mind. You know what I mean? Like if I'm in, it's, it's, if I'm in, if I'm a Pittsburgh player and I'm, or, and I'm playing, or sorry, not Pittsburgh, take Chicago, for instance. And I'm playing in Edmonton, and my family's in Chicago. There's a li- it's a little more unsettling than the idea that my family's right here, where they normally. You know what I mean? I'm I'm not yeah. very far away. My support group is right here, and as yeah. long as I'm tested and they're tested, I can potentially see them. Yeah. Depending I mean, on how the protocols each go. Each player has their different mindset and how they view that. But I could see that being an advantage and what you mentioned about the boards and all that. So now why with all of this, with the Players Association and the owners and, of course, finally the league, think that it isn't an advantage except for one thing? What, what, what do you think one thing would be that would create all of a sudden this kind of logic to go right out the air and be... I don't. I can't what, even put a finger on it. What's I, the first thing that gets rid of logic? Money. Yeah, but uh, even that, you know, because we even talked about that too. Like, if if they were to send the Western teams to the East uh-huh. and send the Eastern teams to the West, and that's something that we talked about, you know, even before the show about how well you're going to have to pay because it's a longer flight and blah 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 blah. Which, you know, I completely agree with you on that. You know what I mean? But I have no rhyme or reason. I can't come up with anything as to why they're doing it like this. I think other it's than... That, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. Other than simply it's a numbers game and there's the least amount of cases in Toronto and the least amount of cases in Edmonton. And so... Yeah, I can see, yeah, for sure. And it's July 1... And camps are supposed to start in nine days. So you better make a decision now <laughs> so yeah. you can get stuff ready to roll because you got nine days to get it rolling. Yeah. I think it's just you know? less travel, travel time for the Eastern teams to go to Toronto, less travel time for the Western teams to go to the West in the immediate, in the immediate future. That's really all it is. And I think maybe the players are like, yeah, you know what? I would rather just, if I'm in Boston, I'm like, yeah, I would rather just go to Toronto rather than have to fly all the way to Edmonton. Uh, I think, but I just find it odd that, that the, even the players association would think that extra time, I don't know, like that extra time, the Toronto yeah. doesn't get an advantage here. That it is, if you're weighing the options, I don't want to give any team an advantage. And, yeah. and that's what I'm trying to say. And Toronto is definitely getting an advantage here, and Edmonton certainly getting an advantage here. And see, I agree with you on that 100. percent I definitely agree that those teams are each getting an advantage. Yeah. And however, like yeah, however slim and none it might be, I don't care what anybody says. I, um, you can, 
you can nail me down to this. Okay, there is going to be an advantage for the Toronto Maple Leafs playing in Toronto. There is going to be an advantage for the Edmonton Oilers playing in Edmonton. Fans or no, not going to matter. Okay. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Actually, now, there is going to be fans. Where do you think all the other teams are going to be? I mean, what? You're, you're going to be stuck there. So you might as well watch everybody else play. <laughs> that'll be interesting. I don't think that'll happen either. Actually. Like, what are they going to do? Like, so does that mean then, like, when, because they're going to have to work out a schedule for that, how they're going to do that, how they're going to play everybody all there in the same building. I can see how it would work in Toronto much easier than how I can see it would work in Edmonton because they can use where the Marlies play right isn't no, that the, the marley's uh, play right in i believe marley's play right in the same arena but they just have different practice facilities yeah oh okay okay yeah. but there's an arena that's not far from there that they could use sure there's lots of big arenas there even their try uh, like it, it, even their minor league teams some of their minor league teams like their mga like their their high triple a midget they have big arenas man it's like, like the stadiums you see for football in the U.S. for, for there are enormous, and they're not for NFL, you know, not for the NFL, but they're still yeah, they're for college, so, yeah, <laughs> college or even high school, yeah, like, like fantastic uh, venues. So, high school, yeah, high school football here in the United States, very big. It's enormous, yeah, yeah, exactly. very big, and you get almost. The same size crowds to a certain – some places like in Texas and California, some of those places. Green Bay. Like, yeah, no, you're – well, maybe. But some of those places, you're getting almost hockey size arenas in there for high school football. Oh, I know. I know. Okay, I so that's, you know, 15, 16, 17,000 people there to watch a high school football game. So. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so anyways, I uh... – with that in not, mind, I think we totally agree that there's definitely an advantage, and I really have a hard time understanding why the uh, league, I, I guess maybe the Players Association as well, just doesn't want to push any buttons. Just get this through. Let's get our guys playing. Let's get paid again. They want to get paid. <laughs> you know, the players and everybody well, that's... Can get everything going again because it's just better for the league to get going. So they're not going to argue too much about certain things like this. Well, also today um, announced was the bonuses are going to be paid that were due July 1st. They will be paid. That's a sum of $300 million, part of the which part of the contract. And so that's going to be paid. And they also, didn't they uh, extend the CBA as well too? Yeah. 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 So they'll, that's they'll, all. They'll get the CBA banged out there. Yeah. We'll that's that some other time, but yeah, for sure. They'll but that's all that. good moves though, I think, because it, it gets and keeps hockey moving in the right direction. It's like I said the other day, man, I'm so impressed with what the NHL has done to try to get hockey out there. And other leagues should stand up and take notice to what NHL is doing because they are doing it the right way, in my opinion. Right. Yeah, I agree. There, I, I agree. Uh, I, like you said, I promoted Gary Bettman before and the league as well. I think it's different dynamics, though. So all things being considered, I mean, it's hard to make comparisons like that. But I do agree that they're doing a fantastic job. Talking about direction and uh, the way teams are going in direction, um, we can move away from this a little bit. And I thought I thought uh, we were having a good conversation before we started up here, and I, I really love the topic. Uh, we have a new franchise coming in, and uh, we don't know what the name is yet. I've heard lots of different things. Um, my favorite was the Seattle Sockeyes. I like that. I like that name. Really? Because the last one I heard was the Krakens. I, don't, I just said that was my favorite. Kraken. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. No, no, no. I just don't like the idea of saying I'm going to see the crack. You know? So, <laughs> and all the, all the, all the uh, innuendos that go on with that type with, with yeah. the word crack in my I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. So that's me, um, and it looks like Amazon has uh, purchased the naming rights for the stadium. So, oh, really? The yes, sir. Brand. Yeah, wow. it's gonna. They're gonna try and make it the least 
uh energy whatever green and en- most green energy yeah the most the green what's so the least carbon footprint of any building on on the face of the planet which yeah. more power to you guys let's see it let me see it because i can't wait to see it it's going to be amazing and a great place to do it in seattle as well because they are very on that uh nature type uh state same as vancouver very natural very sort of thing like that right we'll see We'll see how it goes. You know what I mean? We'll see how it goes. What you call them the Seattle green? <laughs> because everything there is so green. Uh, green or the green Seattle back. rain. Or, yeah, Seattle you know, the Seattle rain. Because like, Seattle... all it does there is rain. That's Seattle... all it does there is rain. The Seattle moist. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't say that. How about the Seattle umbrellas? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, I like the sock, guys. I don't know. It, it sounds more like a baseball but it just sounds, I like it. I don't know why I like it. But anyways, really? the direction, that's one of the ones that they're considering. Uh, the direction that they're going and what, what in comparison to Vegas, um, not necessarily, I'll put a little bit what I would do, but it's more what yeah. I think they're, the direction I think they're going. And uh, for me, the Seattle franchise may be a little in a different position than Vegas. Vegas is not what you call a hockey town. And I suppose you could make a case that Seattle is not, but it's more so. Vancouver's close. Canada's close. These are these people are more in, more under uh, influenced by hockey than probably. Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think there's the same panic, or uh, maybe panic's the wrong word, but the same need to win now in seattle as there was in in vegas what do you figure there so you think that because vegas was coming out like all guns blazing you know they splashed all over the media they you know yeah were all up in your face about who they were what their what their mascot was going to be what their name was going to be i mean i'm i'm assuming that seattle is going to do the same when it's time but I think the ownership in, in Vegas has much deeper pockets. And so I think that's why that's, that's why they it, yeah. yeah, I think that's why they made the the splash that they did because they wanted to attract those big name players so that they could keep those big name players because let's face it, they they were able to get some pretty nice draft picks in the supplemental draft or the uh, expansion draft. Or uh, get some nice players, you mean? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's how they got Flurry. There's no so, Mark Andre Flurries out there this time around. Right. So, and there's not exactly, and the, it's a bit of a different market now. I've than got what something it was. for you before you go on with that, though. Uh-oh. There could there could be a carry price in there. Yeah, there could be. Or maybe there could be a Bob. Oh, there definitely will be a bob. <laughs> but I don't think Seattle's going to take that do that at all. I, no, you don't think so. Unless, okay. unless he turns things around right now, and in which case there's not going to be a bob probably. Because you know. guys pointed on that in your show, you know, with you and Joe pointing out about how if if and if he does, if he plays lights out and whatever, but he he might be on the block too. So you know, hey, nobody's going to take that contract. They got him. They got him. But if they but what if they is how does that work if he's part of the expansion draft do they have to pick up his contract uh no yes yes absolutely okay they, they're they're likely the way he's playing now he'll likely be available but seattle is not going to touch it because they got they definitely got to take that contract for a guy who looks like he's i don't know flipped his lid or something there's no way they're going to pick uh bob there but carrie price is a I, I doubt it because the Montreal uh, Canadians, I think it's probably the right thing for them to do, but seldom do they do the right thing. <laughs> Move on from Carey Price. They got to rebuild in Montreal. I think. Yeah. 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 I'm with you. See, but anyways, coming out with a team. Oh man. I'll tell so you. which, do, I, so, so we, you and I are like, do you agree that it's not as likely that they're going to come out of, all guns blazing, looking for these big contract guys like uh, trading for Marsha Show and, uh, you know, some of those guys that they picked up 
from uh, from these teams? Do you think they're going to uh, trading draft picks actually even? Well, if get, based get, off of players? based off of what we talked about before, and you made the, the great point that they picked up Ron Francis as their general manager. Mm-hmm. So the point that you made, and I have to attend to agree with you on that 100%, is that that pretty much is an indication that they're going to build from the draft. You know, mm-hmm. and, and even if they would have taken Ron Hextall, I, I think he would have done the same thing. You know, he oh, was, yeah. you know, Absolutely. he would have, he would have built from so. the draft. Yeah. Maybe even more so. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and Ron Francis has been around enough and, and, you know, I, I see good things happening in Seattle and, and I'm hoping for good things happening in Seattle. You know, I think it's going um, to take a little longer. Yeah, I agree. I agree a hundred percent because I don't think they're going to come out with the way Vegas did. No. And for, number one, the landscape is different because the, the players available in the, in, in the uh, expansion draft are not going to be quite the same caliber as what they were when Vegas. I'm not sure about that. I think there could be still a lot of good players available there. I just we'll think that see. what they're going to do is they're going to take uh, – they're not going to go for upper-end talent on older players. I think they're going to get the best younger players that they can find. And one really good leader or a couple really good leaders, one really good defensive leader, one really good offensive leader yep. who, can, who can teach these kids. And I, yeah. think, I think they're going to go for the long haul. They're going to b- try yeah. to build a team within four or five years that is marketable. But Makes no I, sense. I think they can bring more people into that building right away, even if they go on the idea that, you know, we're not going to be good right away. I think Seattle fans will still buy the tickets. Uh, I really do. Where Vegas maybe thought we don't really have them. They don't really know hockey well enough here to, to rebuild and have a crappy team. We got to show interest right away. That's kind of what I felt about what Vegas was doing. With Vegas, yeah, because they're not really a hockey town, and they were just—it was kind of their first toe in the water with a you know real professional team, and you know, okay. Yeah. Um, Seattle has had professional teams. Um, they, ha- I believe, that's a good market up there. Um, to be honest with you, because of the proximity to Canada, I think that's a perfect market for Seattle to put a. Uh, a a franchise right and with what you said with Ron Francis being there I think what they might end up doing is they might take some of those high end guys that might be available and trade bait them to get more picks yeah that's very good very good point yeah I think that's likely if they do pick those guys they will likely flip them out you know yeah why why not that's the MO of Ron Francis that's what I mean if you watch what he did in Carolina that's Actually, exactly what he watched did. Watch the way he played. Ron yeah. Francis was one of the best defensive centers ever and doesn't get anywhere near enough credit. Ron Francis was a very unassuming player. He played in behind some amazing players and was an amazing player. But Hall very responsible. Famer, yep. Deserves to be a Hall of Famer. But when you talk about when you ask people who are the best players of all time, very few people bring up Ron Francis. But if you say Ron Francis to people, they're like, yeah, I forgot about Ron Francis. He was amazing. And that's the kind of team that he's going to build. He's going to build a team that kind of goes under the radar, but is fantastic at the same time. That's what he I put a, he, he put the cup in Carolina. Yeah, he built a great team. He hired. He had Peter Laviolette. He brought Ron Brindamore down there, and he set forth and put a cup in Carolina. Paul Maurice was there for now. A that's what I mean. So, of all places to put a hockey team <laughs> in Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> Yeah, that's a hockey town. (laughs) Well, that was the thing. And the reason why I think Ron Francis, yes, he's a great builder. Okay. He he is a fantastic builder. But Carolina needs pizzazz, right? And uh, Dundon came in and did that, and I love him for it. I think it's fantastic. I wish the league would go more that direction in all the cities, to tell you the honest truth. But Ron Francis is not that. 
And I think that's the reason why he had to kind of exit his way out of Carolina because, and he's not going to bring that to Seattle because he's not that. Vegas they don't need that. Ass. They need structure first. Yeah. And that's what he's going to give them. Okay. And he's he's going to give them that structure. Yeah. That's the word. That's the word we're looking for right there. He nailed it. Structure. Yeah. Because the, you, number one, you have to build a farm team. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you're, you're not just building an NHL team. You have to build a farm team too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're not just picking guys in the draft for your, your NHL club. You're picking guys in the draft for your AHL club too. Mm-hmm. So that's a much more daunting task. Well, you have to do it for the AHL club. And knowing Ron Francis, he's a genius man. He knows that when you build your AHL team, it has to be the perfect feeder for your NHL team. So you're building an environment that is going to lead you, is going to emulate or mirror the environment you want in your NHL franchise. Yeah. So one of the biggest things that franchises make a mistake of is they don't pay attention to that. And they bring yeah. these kids up and these kids are like, what is this? Yeah. Right? <laughs> and they're wondering why the kid doesn't have the character that they wanted. Well, but you didn't build it in your minor league system that you built for yourself. And this is what Ron Francis knows all about. No. I mean, you know, you look at what, what Philadelphia is doing and, and say what you will about Scott Gordon, but he's building the kids down there in Lehigh to come in and play the AV system in Philadelphia. Yeah, absolutely. And Gordon will be a head coach again, for sure. I really was hoping that he would do well. I really liked him back there behind the bench. I, I hope he gets another shot somewhere. He, oh, he will. There's no doubt about that. He, I thought he did fine. It's just he's learning. He's just learning. He's just cutting yeah. his teeth. That's all. Yeah, he's yeah. just cutting his teeth. That's all. He's yeah. done really well with the Phantoms. Um, he's had, at the beginning, he's had very little to work with. Uh, but now he's getting a little bit more and more to work with now. And, and you know, I think you're going to start seeing the Phantoms come around a little bit more. You know, so. Mm-hmm. But, interesting how Seattle's going to build. I wonder who they're going to be picking for their coach. Hmm. Um, I, I think it's, I, 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 I think it's, they want, and I don't know if, uh, he's, well, I think they, they want, want. <laughs> I think they really are pining for Gallant after what happened yeah. in Vegas there. Uh, yeah. and, and the people are saying, well, Gallant, you can't, you can't reinvent that. And I don't, I don't think he has to reinvent it. No. Gallant simply has to well will can grow that organization the way that organization wants to be done however they may not go with gallant because of the stigma attached yeah. to what happens in vegas right the, the reputation so yeah that's that's the problem but he's probably the best man for the job as far as coaching minds are concerned at this moment but they may go with a younger guy. Uh, I do. I wouldn't do that. I would probably go with a, a more experienced guy. Who do you think? Got anybody on the top of your head? I haven't really thought all that much. Gosh, about it. man, no, I haven't either. I haven't thought about it. And you know, till they're ready to pick a coach, there might be some coaches available. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, yeah, I haven't really even thought about it to be honest with you. Uh, uh, you got Laviolette, like you said. Uh, Laviolette. Yeah, he's out there. Laviolette's would... out there. And he has rep, he has uh, working experience with Ronnie Francis because mm-hmm. he hired he hired him in Carolina, yeah. and they they put the cup together there in Carolina with with Laviolette. So that might be wow. Right there. Might what a great there. point, dude! What a man! You smacked that one right out of the park, man. <laughs> yeah. That's I didn't even think about that until you just said it, man. That's huh. Because that's exactly who he hired to bring in to be the coach. And Laviolette's got that system, I think, that works really well with kids. Huh? Because he's one of those – he's a he's a bit of a boisterous. He's going to tell you a little bit how – I mean, kind of a little bit more so than A.V., I think. That's going to be the question is do they want his old school – uh, uh, real. How, how you, he he puts a lot of pressure on his on his players, and yeah. he doesn't screw around because he's a one on one guy. He it's he he puts that like um, he does that modified one two two system, and he puts everybody mm-hmm. man up. 
You know oh, what yeah. I mean? High yeah. pressure system. And I, right. I, I like I like that yeah. idea. I mean, I think it's good for uh But if you don't uh, have the players or the talent, then then you're pretty much hanging your your defense and your goalie out to dry. <laughs> yeah. It depends on what they want to look at. Do they want to look at building the system and not worrying about whether the talent can handle it right away? Because you're going to want to get high draft picks anyways if you're going to be turning this around. So you may go with a guy like Lavi. Try to get as much speed as you can so they can keep, at least keep up to his system and then go that direction. I think that's a, that's a very good possibility um, that uh, they do go that way. I'm just trying to think of some of the other guys that have been fired as of as of late. Oh, Lindy Ruff is another one that could be, that's out there that could a possibility. But I really like Lab because, again, if you're going to start a whole new organization, do you want to build a new relationship with a guy you don't know? You know, like yeah. that's just one more thing on the books that you got to work with. Yeah. And yeah. If, you, if you already know the guy and you know how he works and he knows how you work and stuff like that, it's just one more thing that you don't have to work on when you're building a whole organization. So I think Labby might be the one there. Okay, there you go. Man, you heard it here first. Dropping all kinds of pearls of wisdom on that one, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> we we didn't even that wasn't even what we were originally talking about, was it? We didn't even go there and we were like, hey, all right, well, we'll go there. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Seattle franchise in general and what which direction they're gonna go. And if they're gonna go the Lavi franchise, and then the next question is does Lavi wanna rebuild? Does Lavi wanna how many more years does he want to coach for? He's getting up there, right? Does he want to coach for the next 10 years or however long? Uh, that, that would be the next. Oh, year. I guarantee you, if you wave enough money in, in, in front of uh, Peter LaViolette and, and at least a four year deal. Four year deal, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, for sure. He's not going to do it without getting a four year deal. Either. Exactly. So if you wave a four year deal and enough money in front of his face and uh, a, pretty, a pretty good shot at putting together a team the way he wants to building it with Ron Francis, somebody that he's already worked with. That might be the winning combination right there in Seattle. That yeah. might, that might get them to contention in four years because mm -hmm. I don't think it's, I don't think, I think you need four years because that gives the players that you draft a chance to go through the system, come up and be playing for the big club. Okay, so that's why I'm a fan of the four years. Three years to me is just kind of like cutting off your nose to spite your face. Because why give somebody three years when just when their draft picks are going to start coming good, now they're gone? You know? Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> give me that extra year so I have those draft picks now that I drafted are now going to come to fruition. And this is now they're playing for the team now. Now we're winning. Now I can get that extension. Now I can get that longer term deal with the way more, you know, $10 million a year, whatever. Yeah. And well, the thing is, it's also guaranteed money. The coach wants the guaranteed money. If you give him a four year contract and you fire him after two years, he still gets paid for the other two. So uh, uh, is there going to be another team that's willing to give Laviolette the, the four years? The only thing with Laviolette, again, is you brought it up. There's a new system in play now. There's new coaches. The coaches are changing their styles. Tortorella's changed their styles. Trotz brought in the style. Yeah. Trotz, Trotz brought in this player-friendly style. And uh, Laviolette's not known for player-friendly. Uh, <laughs> so the question... No, he's is, not. <laughs> is he, does, that's the biggest question there. Is how many organizations out there are going to want this old-school guy that doesn't seem to want to switch his style? from to 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 this player friendly kind of movement that's going on right now. Okay, well, let's look at what happened with AV. Uh -huh. Okay. AV had a year off basically. Yeah. Okay. Got to take a year off, got to reassess, got to tweak systems whatever whatever and come back flying. Uh -huh. Peter Laviolette going to have a year off or whenever the Seattle franchise is going to go, you know what I mean? When's that next year? Yeah. 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 Okay. So he's going to have a year off. He can realign, reassess, come back out swinging, you know? So, but we'll see. It's going to be interesting for sure to see who they select for their coach. 
Well, they're going to have a good goaltender. That's the good thing. Uh, there, it probably won't. It's not going to be Mark Andre Fleury like, possibly Carey Price, like I said. But I, I just don't think Montreal is going to do the right thing there. I really don't. And, and isn't uh, uh, I think uh, isn't Cam Talbot? Isn't he available? And there's a couple other goalies out there. Well, there. Cam Talbot, but I wouldn't call him a guy that's kind of you know franchise saver by any stretch. Hey, of I'm just saying. But uh, yeah, there there are some guys. Uh, I'm just trying to think uh, some of the guys it's, that might be available. So it looks um, like uh, Corey Crawford might be. Could be He's Jari, un- unrestricted Jari. free agent. It could be Jari or, or for Pittsburgh. I mean, that would be good. Uh, um, and I've also been hearing potentially that Holtby might be available. Holtby might take a one-year contract yeah. with the team. With the team, see how it works out. And if it doesn't work out, I think Holtby would be happy to go to that expansion team. Because if I remember correctly, he's from the Vancouver area or something like that as well. I could really? be wrong about that. I, okay. I could be completely wrong about that. I, I don't know. But – um, uh, it Saskatchewan. Would, it, would, it would extend his career. He's from, uh, yeah, Saskatchewan. So it that's... would extend his. It would extend his career. And, yeah. Uh, because he would be the number one there almost for sure for quite some time. Uh, Look, I still think that hopey has got. I still think he's a good goalie, but you can't expect him to just play f- fifty some games every year. <laughs> And and do it like that every year. You you you, you got to you got to have somebody in there behind him to take off some of the heat. Sure, he's the most one of the most inconsistent Stanley Cup goaltenders ever. When he's hot, he's freaking crazy. When he's not, he's absolute garbage. And that's just the truth. agreed. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah. Agreed. I, no, I agree with you hundred percent. He can take you to a cup easy. Like it's yeah. it's weird. It's weird. It must be a mental state or something that he goes into. I'm not sure, but uh, when he's like, and things seem to bother him. Like this year was a was a uh, contract year, and it looked like he wasn't going back to Washington, and he played horrible. So yeah, yeah, really bad. See, and they didn't want Samson up to really be the guy this year, but they had no choice because Hulk yeah. couldn't hold, hold his hand. Yeah. Of the, of the equation. Anyways, well, I think we figured out. I think we solved all the issues for today, my friend. That's it. <laughs> you were Just solved all of them for today, right? Just yeah, for today. You were, you were wondering what, what was going to happen in the league and how they were going to, all these problems were going to be solved. And just boom, just like that. Solved them all just like that, man. All, all you had to do was tune in and, and, and check it out, man. And just like that, boom, all taken care of. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Steel Flyers at Steel Flyers on Twitter, right? Yep. Yes. And Thank you very much, man. It's been it's been a blast. It's been um, it's been an honor to be honest with you. It's been a real honor to to be on here with you. Um, I feel um, very blessed and 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 feel very lucky to be here with you guys and uh, um, dropping all them pearls of wisdom, man. Can't can't go wrong with that. So I'm you can reach. Not. Go ahead. You can reach what? You can reach me at uh, Steel Flyers on Twitter at Steel Flyers, yeah. and com- coming up soon, hopefully real soon, is uh, SteelFlyers dot com, and uh, check out the first podcast that's available on Spotify and soon to be up on Google uh, in the podcast store there in Google. So check it out. Um, the first episode of Steel Flyers the podcast. Thanks very much, Perla, for having me, brother. It's been great. You got to check it out, and I will have lots of collaborations coming up. You can check me at, at Pearl uh, uh, Perlo's NHL POW uh, at uh, on Twitter as well. Love to have you there. Um, and for our new episodes that are coming up, that are going to be absolutely the finest in the land. So hit the subscribe, hit the bell. That's what I keep on forgetting to do that in the beginning. Subscribe bell, subscribe bell. I don't know why I got to tell you that. Should be like yeah. all over. Hit, you know? I mean, you know, hit the subscribe button. Come on, you know you wanna. You know you wanna, <laughs> you know you wanna like it because you know you can't get enough. Yeah, because you can be one of the cool kids. <laughs> uh, so this has been fun, like always. See yeah, you man. next time, boys and girls. Have a great day and lots of love too. Yeah.